Welcome to our Silhouette Alta class. I'm Kelly Waymond, and in this class I'll teach you about the basics of the Silhouette Alta 3D printer and how to use the Silhouette 3D software to create your own 3D prints. The Silhouette Alta is a 3D printer, which is a machine that creates a physical object from a 3D digital model. It does this by pushing plastic filament through a tiny heated nozzle, laying down many thin layers in succession. In the box, you have the Alta 3D printer along with its power and USB cables, a white filament starter, a filament spool holder, a platform and extra platform tape, hex keys, nozzle cleaner, spatula, a clear filament guide tube, and keys. The spool holder is for holding the starter filament, but it's not necessary once you start placing full-size spools on top. The spool holder was printed by your own machine in the factory to prove it was working and calibrated when it shipped. As you use your Alta, you may find a few more tools and supplies to be helpful. You'll want full-size colored filament refills, platform tape refills, some thinner spatula tools, pliers or cutters or scissors of some sort, and you'll want copy paper for calibration. Next we'll talk about setting up the device and loading the software. The best way to set up and start using your Alta is to visit silhouetteamerica.com slash setup and choose the Alta. Sign in with your existing Silhouette account or create a new account if you're new to Silhouette. Complete the information and submit the registration. Then you're ready to continue on to each step, which will guide you through setting up your Alta. Then download and install the Silhouette 3D software. Step 4 tells you where to access the free 3D shapes in the library, but we'll do that when we dig into the software soon. The final section gives you easy access to user guides, manuals, and additional resources. Once you're in Silhouette 3D, you can find references in the Help menu. That includes the Startup Slideshow, the Manual again, and Instructional Videos, which takes you to the Alta YouTube playlist. Next, we're going to talk about calibration. Although your machine was calibrated before it was shipped, it's possible during shipping for things to move a little, so it's a good idea to calibrate your Alta when you're ready to start using it. To calibrate your machine, go to the 3D Print tab in Silhouette 3D and choose the middle icon at the bottom that resembles a platform. When you click that, it will walk you through the steps. So we're going to place a piece of copy paper on the platform and in the software we'll click Start. You'll use a piece of copy paper that you've cut small enough to fit inside the compartment and the nozzle will move down and touch three calibration points. When it comes down, you want to move your paper around while it's touching down. What you're looking for is very, just a moderate amount of resistance. So if it's really easy to move or if it's really hard to move, that means it's not calibrated. I like to hear a little bit of, listen and hear a little bit of resistance as I move it around. So this point here was a little bit too easy to move and I've clicked in the software that it was easy. So now all I need to do is follow the instructions and tighten with the hex key this little screw. To tighten you just do a little counterclockwise and so then I can click test again in the software and it'll let me try that out again. That's much better. I can hear and feel a little bit of resistance. You can calibrate as often as you feel it's necessary. When my 3D prints are not sticking well to the print bed, calibration is the first thing I checked. And if you ever feel like your calibration is way too tight when it was normal recently, you might want to check that there's no cooled plastic sitting at the end of the nozzle. Next we're going to talk about the filament. To load, click the filament icon in the 3D print tab. Then choose load filament. 
You'll place the filament on top of the Alta and you need to make sure that you cut off any crooked ends on the tip. You want it to have a clean blunt tip with no kinks in it. Then you'll feed it through the eye on the top of the Alta and then push it through the clear filament feed tube. Once you've got that through, you need to put the top end of the guide tube through the little eye so the filament doesn't wear that away as it moves back and forth. Once you have a couple inches poking out the end of the filament guide tube, press it into the feed hole until it stops. You don't need to push the lever. This positions the filament right up against the gear of the feed motor. Then you'll advance through the on-screen instructions and click load while you're applying light pressure on the filament as it's in the hole. Once the print head is heated, the feed motor will grab the filament and start to feed it automatically down the inner tube, at which point you can let go of the filament. The filament will feed into the print head and extrude some filament to clear any previous color. Then insert the end of the guide tube into the loading hole after the filament has finished loading. You don't need to press the lever at all in this process. To unload the filament to switch colors or to store it, use the same filament bu button on the 3D print tab and follow the instructions to unload. It will heat the print head, extrude a little filament, and automatically unload the filament. Store your filament with desiccant in a moisture and air resistant container so it doesn't become brittle. You can use plastic bags or a storage tub with a seal if you have a lot of filament spools. Next we're going to talk about platforms and platform tape. Platform tape is already applied to your build plate when it comes with your Alta. This provides the right kind of surface for the PLA filament to stick to the build plate as it prints. You can generally keep the same platform tape on the build plate for multiple prints as long as it's in good condition. If you get scratches or gouges in your platform tape, you need to remove that and replace it with a new piece of platform tape. Scratches, holes, and tears in the platform tape will cause flaws to be carried through your 3D prints. You also should smooth out any bubbles after you have removed your print from the platform tape. If your prints aren't sticking well to the platform and the machine is calibrated, it's possible the platform tape has too many finger oils and should, should be replaced at that time too. To remove the platform tape, just peel it off like a big piece of tape. You'll take a new piece of platform tape and line it up at the notches. So I like to line it up at the top notch and then hold it down flat against the platform and I peel away the backing of the bottom half. While you're still holding that in place, smooth it down as you peel away the backing. And I like to use this wide spatula to smooth that down. You want it completely flat with no bubbles. Once that side's on, you can remove the backing off the top half. Now it's ready for more prints. Next, let's print a simple project so you can see how the machine works. In this lesson, we'll learn how to create a design and print it using the Alta. We'll start in the software. We'll use the design in the library. You can view or hide your library by clicking these double arrows. Go to the Free with Machine folder, choose the Alta folder, choose Seaside Pendants, and then the Anchor. We'll print it just how it opens. Go to the 3D Print Navigation tab and leave it at the standard quality setting. The print estimate is about four to five minutes. Click Print. The print head moves into position near the base and over the small well. 
The print head will heat up. Some noises are normal as it prepares to extrude the filament, such as a soft buzzing sound. It extrudes a little bit of filament to make sure it's flowing properly. Then it creates a brim as an outline around the design. It starts with a slow first layer, then it builds up the full design, layer by layer. The printer will stop and the software lets you know when it's finished. It does need to cool before touching it. You can print with the door open or shut, it just depends on how hot it looks in there. I usually print it with my door shut and then I'll open the door if it looks like it's getting too stringy and hot. So we'll remove the platform out of the Alta. And this has actually cooled long enough, so I'm going to go ahead and remove it from the base. This little uh, brim on the outside and the little extrusion part at the beginning can just be thrown away. So I've used my spatula and just pulled it off. There you go, we've got our first print made with the Alta. Next, we're going to dive deeper into the software and learn some of the basics. Let's take a closer look at the Silhouette 3D software. When you open Silhouette 3D, you'll see a workspace with a virtual build area ready to hold designs for 3D printing. This can be text, preset 3D shapes, or designs from your Silhouette library. You can even open designs from third-party sources that are in a compatible file format, such as STL or OBJ files. Most of these tools should be familiar to you, so I won't spend much time on the menu and every individual tool icon. We'll use the most common ones as we go along. As I mentioned before, click the double arrow to reveal or hide the library. When you're signed in, the library will sync with your existing cloud library if you've used Silhouette Studio with other Silhouette machines. The 3D Designs folder contains any 3D Alta designs you purchase from the Silhouette Design Store. The Free with Machine folder contains 3D Alta designs that load when you first connect and register your Alta. Double-click to open a design or drag it to the workspace. The Store tab opens a web browser that takes you to the Silhouette Design Store. It automatically loads the 3D printing category. When you purchase 3D designs, they automatically load into the 3D Designs folder. One important area I do want to point out in the Design tab is the Quick Access Toolbar. When you have a design selected, popular options appear here for functions like rotating, grouping or ungrouping, leveling to bed or centering to bed, and changing dimensions. To change dimensions, make sure you lock it to adjust proportionately or unlock to change just one dimension, such as the height. I use dimensions most often, but clicking the drop-down arrow also gives options for inputting exact rotation or scale values. Open a new document with the plus symbol and let's look at the shapes we can create. With the shape creation tool, you can create a cone, cube, cylinder, dome, pyramid, sphere, frustum of cone, torus or donut, hollow cylinder, or a wedge. Let's practice with a wedge. The object will center itself on the virtual platform or base. Zoom in or out with the mouse scroll wheel. You can find more zoom icons at the top. Change the orientation with a mouse right click and drag or with the page orientation cube. Drag the corner handle of an object to resize it proportionately. Drag a side handle to compress or expand. Shift and the corner handle together allows you to change disproportionately. Click and drag a shape to move. To center the shape back on the bed, use Center to Bed on the Quick Access Toolbar. Use the center handle to adjust height or thickness of a selected object. This is great for flat objects and text. Use this arrow to lift an object vertically above the base. This is helpful if you're stacking objects to create new shapes. 
use Level to Bed on the Quick Access Toolbar to get it flush with the base again. You have rotation handles on the selected object or for 90 degree rotations in the Quick Access Toolbar. And of course you have an Undo button, which is really useful. One note about saving projects. If the design opens with the name of the design showing, I suggest going to File, Save As, Save to Hard Drive, or it might save to the library under the same name it opened as, creating a duplicate title. If it's labeled as untitled, you can use the normal save icon to give it a name. We went over basic navigation and how to create and manipulate shapes. Next we'll talk about snap kits. Snap kits in Silhouette 3D allow you to build custom objects with pre-designed pieces. This is the Design a Duck snap kit, both painted and unpainted. These special 3D printing files let you customize your piece by mixing and matching different design elements. Some snap kits are included with the free Alta 3D designs, and you can purchase additional snap kits from the Silhouette Design Store. This Design a Duck snap kit can be found in the Free with Machine folder. When you double click to open a snap kit, you'll find some divisions in the folder, such as a base and accessories. Open the main piece by double clicking. Notice the colored dots on the duck. Those are the predetermined snap points to put the other parts of the snap kit in the right place. Simply drag an accessory over from the library and you'll notice it has its own colored dots. That means that piece will snap to the corresponding snap points on the main piece. Drag a piece showing the dots toward the main piece with the same colored dots and you'll see a colored line appear. When you see that line appear, you can release your mouse and the object will snap into the correct position. If you don't like it, you can replace it in some snap kits by dragging over a new object that fits the same area, or just delete that piece by selecting it and press the delete key. This is a fun way to customize your 3D objects that are part of a snap kit. Sometimes those snap kit pieces are accessories for a character, sometimes they're a lid to a box, and sometimes they're for text. Objects that are snapped together are automatically grouped, so you don't need to go through the extra step of grouping snap kits. They become one piece in the 3D print tab. If it's a snap kit with a lid, the software does know when an object is a lid and will print that separately. Although the pieces are colored in the design screen, you can only print in one filament color. I printed both of these ducks with yellow filament, but one I sanded with sandpaper to smooth out the rough edges and then painted with a fine paintbrush and acrylic paints. I stopped this duck in the middle of printing. You can see the infill or support structure inside the 3D print. 3D prints are mostly hollow in the middle. Be sure to check out the full SnapKit collection in the Silhouette Design Store. Silhouette 3D can use many of your existing 2D designs from the library and convert them into a selection of 3D projects. When you try and open a regular library design, a pop-up box appears. This lets you select from six different import options. They're extrusion, cookie cutter, jewelry box, stencil box, stencil, and wax pendant. Most 2D designs will not work with all six options, so try some out to see what works and what doesn't. The first import option we'll talk about is extrusion. With extrusion, what you see is what you get. Here's a design that would be a cut file in Silhouette Studio. I've opened it in Silhouette 3D and printed it with my Alta. I'll show you how to make this one in the software. Open the Echo Park Arrows design as an example and choose Extrusion. Designs that are part of a set will open the entire set and automatically resize to fit the base. Ungroup and move the heart to the center of the nearest arrow. Delete the rest. Here's an important thing to know. Even though they look like one piece here in the design view, 
I haven't grouped them. If I go to the 3D Print tab, you'll see there's still two separate pieces. The arrow will print first, and you can see at the bottom of the screen that the heart is a separate shape that's queued up and will have to be selected separately to print. If I want them to print as a single merged piece, I need to group them in the Design tab. I'll select both and choose Group on the Quick Access toolbar. Group is the same thing as Weld when working in Silhouette 3D. If I go back to the 3D Print tab, you'll see they're now a single welded piece, and it will print this arrow. When you choose Cookie Cutter when opening a 2D library design, the design is automatically converted to a cookie cutter with a base and thin walls like this heart-shaped cookie cutter. Let's look in the software again. When opening a design with many pieces, the entire set opens, which is not so great for cookie cutters. Simple shapes are best, not designs in large sets. If I want just one of these hearts, it takes some effort to single it out, and it may not convert well when resized. A great way to single out a piece from a group or to make any modifications is to do it in Silhouette Studio before opening it in Silhouette 3D. I'll go to Silhouette Studio where I've opened the same heart collection from my library. I can ungroup it and save just the piece I want as a Silhouette Studio file. Now back in Silhouette 3D, I can choose the Open icon and open that Silhouette Studio file and choose the Cookie Cutter option. Silhouette Studio version 4.2 will have the option to choose the Alta base among the cutting mat choices and open Silhouette 3D straight from Silhouette Studio version 4.2. Now let's look at the Jewelry Box option. This red heart box with the lid is an example of what you can make from a simple 2D heart design. The software automatically converts a design to a jewelry box with a lid. The design protrudes from the lid base. In the software, I just choose this hearts design and select jewelry box when my choices pop up. This box is in two pieces, so you go to the 3D print tab, send the first one to print, and then let it cool. You'll remove it from the base when it's cool and put the base back in the Alta before selecting the second part to print. The pieces match perfectly when they're finished. It's very similar to the stencil box, which I'll show you next. The stencil box choice automatically converts the design to a jewelry box with a lid but this time the design is inset into the lid. I printed both of these boxes at the default size the way they opened, and the lids are interchangeable because I used the same shape. The next import option for 2D designs is stencil. The stencil choice takes the design and makes holes in a flat plate to create a stencil. Let's create this in the software. You need a simple shape with no inner holes when choosing the stencil import option. If you tried this with a design that has cutouts already, the cutouts will become separated when printed and will not be part of the final stencil. Design sets will include all the pieces of the set in the stencil, and they cannot be detached while in Silhouette 3D. Remember, you can single out pieces of a set in Silhouette Studio and save it before opening that saved studio file in Silhouette 3D. Note that when opening two-dimensional designs, Silhouette 3D will resize them to fit the virtual build plate. Large sets will be smaller in order to fit them on. Saving as a studio file in Silhouette Studio will not retain its size when opened within Silhouette 3D. Your last option for opening 2D designs is Wax Pendant. These hearts and this phrase are both from selecting the Wax Pendant choice. It's basically an extrusion design placed on a solid base. I think this is great for turning phrases into keychains. Let me show you how to do that in the software.
If I open this hashtag tired phrase as an extrusion, the letters are all separated and won't stay together when printed. If I delete this and then choose the same design as a wax pendant, then it's automatically fused to a base. I'll resize it to 3 inches wide with locked dimensions. To turn it into a keychain, I can open a tube shape from my shape creation tools on the left. Move that to the side and resize it to 0.25 inches with locked dimensions, and then unlock and change the height to 0.10 inches. Now move it into position so it's overlapping the phrase. I'm using my right mouse key and the scroll bar to change the view, and my space bar to pan. Remember to select it all and choose Group so it fuses together. Now it's ready to print in the 3D Print tab. Don't forget you can create your own phrase or name in Silhouette Studio, then open the saved file in Silhouette 3D as a wax pendant choice before resizing and adding the keychain loop. Now you can see how to get creative with your existing 2D shapes with the six import options in Silhouette 3D. The last key design feature of Silhouette 3D is text. In the software, you'll find the text tool on the left side of the design workspace. Click on the text tool, then type your text into the pop-up box and click OK. Now text options appear on the Quick Access toolbar. Your font list includes any installed on your computer. I'll choose LW Perfect Poster. And I'll choose Center Justification. Notice the snap point that appears with text. I'll drag this text to the side to use in a minute, then I'll go to my Free with Machine folder in my library and open the Keyring Blank collection. I want the blank shield keyring. See the snap point on this shape? When I drag the text near the shield, a line appears when it's ready to snap together. I can still adjust or edit the text. This just needs to be resized smaller, and I want to rotate it. There's no need to group. The text automatically becomes attached to the design because of the snap points. Several free designs have snap points for text, indicated by the red letter A. I've printed this badge with black filament, then painted the letters white. We'll talk more about finishing in the last lesson. The text feature is a fun way to customize any of your 3D prints. Silhouette 3D will open a lot of files designed in other 3D printing software. This flexible dinosaur keychain I found on Thingiverse as an STL file. You'll find lots of free downloadable designs online that can be opened and printed in Silhouette 3D. If you know how to create 3D files in other 3D software, and can save them as accepted file types, then you can generally open them and print them in Silhouette 3D. We've looked at the 3D Print tab already, but let's talk more about the print settings in the software. Once you have your design ready to print, go to the 3D Print tab to check your settings and send it to the Alta. When you open the tab, and each time you make an adjustment to the print quality or settings, you may notice a slicing progress bar. This is just the software thinking through the layers breakdown, after which it will give you an estimated time and estimated filament usage. Just like in the Design tab, you can also use your mouse scroll bar to zoom or right-click and drag to change the view. When you have ungrouped pieces, look at the bottom of the page to see separately queued pieces they can be selected and printed one at a time. You have three default quality settings, draft, standard, and high quality. This also provides print estimates for time and material. Click the gear icon to find advanced print settings. You can find details for all the advanced print settings in the manual, so I'll just touch on the ones I use most often. I use standard settings most of the time, but if you do need to make adjustments when troubleshooting a print, this is where you can do it. In the Layers and Perimeters tab, you can adjust the temperature, among other things. 
infill is how much of this inner material it places. While we're talking about infill, let's look at this partially printed duck. Most of the design is relatively hollow, but the infill provides support and structure while the layers are building. The density of infill changes with standard, draft, or high quality. Look at the animation in the 3D Print tab. You can push play or drag the animation slider to see exactly how the print will perform. Draft quality leaves bigger gaps in the infill. My duck was printed on standard, and high quality has a denser infill. When a design like this cutie pet has an overhang, you might want to try printing with supports. Click the gear icon again and go to the Supports and Adhesion tab. Check the box for Supports and click Save Settings. You'll need to give a new name whenever you make adjustments because you can't save over the three default quality settings. The software automatically places support material under overhangs so the filament isn't extruding hot plastic over open space. It prints as you see it. The supports are easy to break off and then you just have some cleanup to do where it was lightly attached. This extra filament that prints along the outside before the main model is called a brim, also known as a skirt in the 3D printing world. The brim serves two purposes. It makes sure the material is flowing and sticking as expected, and it can help with thermal insulation and prevent warping by providing more surface area for prints. You can increase the brim width and decrease the gap in the advanced print settings. There are more adjustments you can make as you try and fine-tune your prints based on troubleshooting suggestions. This otter prints as you see it. The supports are easy to break off and then you just have some cleanup to do where it was lightly attached. This extra filament that prints along the outside before the main model is called a brim or also called a skirt in the 3D printing world. It serves two purposes. It makes sure the material is flowing and sticking to the base as expected and it can help with thermal insulation and prevent warping by providing more surface area for prints. You can increase the brim width and decrease the gap in the advanced print settings. There are more adjustments you can make as you try to fine tune your prints based on troubleshooting suggestions. I was having trouble with this octopus having a thin layer at the very top. I took care of his bald spot by adding additional top shell layers with my advanced print settings. Other icons you'll find in the 3D Print tab are at the bottom of the window. Home resets the print head position. Calibrating is very important, and we talked about that at the beginning. We also talked about the filament icon, which walks you through loading or unloading the filament. You'll find manual controls here as well. This allows you to heat the print head, reposition the print head, or feed the filament in case it's stuck. We've talked about fine-tuning print settings. The last thing we'll talk about is options for customizing and finishing your projects after they've been printed. Your options for finishing are varied. If you feel like your print isn't perfect straight off the platform, you're not alone. All 3D prints, not just those made with the Alta, might need some touch-ups. You can leave them plain, sand them with sandpaper, or use paint. I've used craft acrylic paint on the pumpkins, the duck, and the badge. I suggest looking online because there's lots of resources for finishing your PLA prints, and that's not just exclusive to the Alta. I hope you feel more confident in what the Silhouette Alta can do, how it works, and how to use the Silhouette 3D software to create or open your 3D prints. This is a machine that rewards experimentation, so feel free to play with a lot of different design types and adjust your settings and finishing techniques as you continue to learn. We also have a lot of resources on Silhouette101.com. Just search for Alta and you'll find videos, instruction, troubleshooting tips, and inspiration to help you out. Thanks for joining me, and happy printing!